dim, 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 dim. I, I kind of like the intro so much that I'm always like uh, jingling with it. Is that even a word, jingling? Anyways, welcome everyone to this next episode of A Planet Zoo. Today with another fictional habitat and today it is the beaver habitat. Yes, you guys have been mentioning that one so, so often and I always had this planned in my mind. But I never really found the right spot for it. I never felt comfortable enough to do it uh, just as of now. But then, I don't know, the last couple of days I was like, I think that might work. And the only reason why is like, I kind of in my, my head um, always wanted to go for an African animal uh, because I don't know, it, it just kind of was the African area. But then I thought, you know, why, why just... Why want, do I want to be so focused on that one? It doesn't really matter. Um, if I just want to do something else, I just do it. And so, you know, that kind of happened. I just did this beaver habitat. Now, this is a bit of a experimental thing here. It's not going to be like a functional habitat whatsoever at the end, but I think that's not the point of it. The point of it is to prove that this kind of sort of habitat does work in the game, which is kind of cool. And I'm, I, I was at least trying to give it a tiny bit of realism aspect here um, with having the bedding placed already in the spot where this is. And before we go into, let's go a little bit into the actual animal itself. So the beavers have a certain way of uh, building their habitats. And I was actually just quickly doing my research so I don't get anything wrong here. Now, there is a big, big misconception, and this is that the beavers build the dam and live in the dam. But in fact, that's not really that, you know, it's not really right, because the dam itself is only there to raise the water level, and then they have their own house they build, which kind of looks a bit more like, not really like a dam, but like more like a kind of little dome, if you will, out of a lot of uh, branches and stuff like that, which we are building currently, um, where they do live in. And they have a very clever way of doing that. So this little dome also acts like some, some kind of dome that you would sculpt over a given space, which you can see here where my bedding is placed. This is kind of the given place where you sculpt the dome over. And you know it from yourself, when you put it over, there is still a little bit of um, air in. So what happens is that they do have this um, shape sculpted over the area where they have their bedding and their little um, security area, so to say. Um, and then they do swim down below into the water under the edge of this dome, so to say, that is sinking into the water quite a little more deeper uh, than the actual water level is. And as you can see over here in the side cut, this is how they do it. They just swim in there from the sides and then they just can, um, kind of dive up again and they are in security inside of this little um, hut they built themselves and this is mostly done with a lot of branches and old kind of leaf patches, moss and all that kind of stuff uh, glued together to this, um, I would say like a modern iglo design, I don't know. Um, well, actually it's not modern because I think the animals have been there before the Eskimos started doing iglos though, but um, the idea is quite, you know, um, quite clever if you ask me because that's how they are secured from from most of their predators and also most of the environmental influences i mean they do have a hard time once their level of the river is raising but i think sometimes even the whole system raises with it because it's floating if i'm not completely mistaken or mostly floating like even the um internals where they are in the dry, so to say, I still believe that this is also built on top of the water, like on some floaty material, so that in case the water level rises, the whole system raises with it, and so goes down back again. Um, I'm, I'm, I must be super wrong if, if, if that's not true, because I, I still do think I remember correctly here. I mean, it might not be true, you know, for whatever, but um, or for, for like every time. But I think mostly the, the design of it goes into this direction, which I think is super clever and I love the design and yeah. Um, and to not forget the other dam that they actually do build, um, this is, as I said, just to control the water level and just raise it because obviously they don't build their own hut um, later on when the water's already there. So they build it in the dry, so to say, and then they build the dam to raise the water level. I'm not exactly sure though if it's all like, kind of one after the other of it's all in parallel and then just raise the level but anyways this is how the system um, for the beavers work and so yeah you can see me doing this habitat here today mostly naturally so there's a lot of um, nature stuff going on less building here which I think is also a good little change of pace sometimes you know building is not that relevant when you do make like a supernatural habitat as I'm trying to do over here 
So it's quite focused on making the scene rather realistic. And also in my mind, and you guys have to give me a little hint in the comment section down below if you like this idea or not. I will also talk about that a little bit more in the real time part. Um, I think it's kind of a cool idea to pretend that, you know, these animals do live here already. So this, this is not like a zoo habitat. This would actually be their, their habitat that is kind of incorporated into the zoo and obviously has not been deleted, but actually uh, worked into the zoo and just kind of gave them still the freedom to live there. And it's kind of the idea I had about this in mind. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite confident that this idea might make it through to the end. Um, but you know, if, if there are some good feedback and valid feedback why and how to change it i still would look uh, look into how improving uh could work um on that kind of thing here and uh, sorry if my english is weird today i don't know I'm, I'm just completely done like this this last couple of days with the heat here in germany have actually destroyed me like i have planned so many things for you guys but i couldn't really do them as of now because i'm just like super done i'm tired like I've, I've never been, I mean, I can't even remember when I've been that tired in the past um, because normally, you know, just, just to mention that, normally I'm a super energetic person and I don't need that much sleep, which is a, is a gift to sort of say. It's not like I'm just sleeping less. I don't need that much sleep, which again is a super much um, the, the best gift you can have. Um, however, sometimes, uh, and this is the one thing I need, when I go to sleep, I need my sleep, you know, I, I don't need that much sleep, but this sleep I have needs to be good. And usually it is, I'm, I'm kind of the guy, I can sleep wherever I need to, you know, if, if, if you give me some time and a little place to lie down, I'm going to sleep. That's, that's no issue whatsoever. I can sleep in a hammock, I can sleep uh, in, in the back of the car, I can sleep wherever you need me to sleep. I'll do this, okay, it's not a big deal. I always had that, so it's really cool. Um, but the heat holy, this is something I can't stand um, for so long. And the problem is, I don't know why it is so crazy this year for us, but this year has been much, much more heavy than the last couple of years because the heat is not, like it is one big issue, but the humidity I think is the most incredible thing this year. And so we do have like an air conditioning unit here in the office and I also have one in the bedroom but you obviously can't leave that running for the whole night because that you know would make you sick in no time that's not going to happen but it, it cooled down the room but the the walls are heated so crazily and the humidity is still in there even though um the aircon has a de dehumidifier function if you will uh, which is kind of good but still it can't cool the room down enough to make it last for let's say an hour or two at least as long that you can finally fall asleep but it's just incredible and so i'm really suffering a little bit from that so um yeah i'm really hoping that there is a little bit of cool air period coming up the next coming days to just regain some energy but yeah just that as a little bit of a side note let's jump back to the waterfall over here because this is the one feature i wanted to bring in the water has to come from somewhere and i just didn't want to make it appearing uh, out of nowhere the only little problem i have here and i might change this totally in the future um, if I have the time uh, as of now I, I will leave it the way it is but I'm not in particular happy with it because the waterfall tumbling down so close to the actual beaver habitat I think it wouldn't make that much sense because there's quite a lot of force going on from the waterfall pushing this area and so I mean I'm, I'm quite confident that beavers can build rather um, steady and um, very nice and stable but yet again, I don't think it would be that close to a waterfall with all this power coming from it, pushing against this. So it would be rather a little bit further ahead into the river. Um, but, you know, I just needed to work my way into here with a bit of more space, uh, less space given. But yeah, I think there's always a way of changing that in the future. Maybe even making this river look kind of interesting with all the a little bit of canyon walls to it so that could also be a cool solution but yeah i'll leave it as it is right now i like the looks of the habitat but um, again realistic um realism wise it's not the best thing you can have so yeah maybe i'm gonna change that a little bit but you know if you have an idea let me know in the comments down below maybe i'm super wrong and they love to build uh, their habitats just close to these water streams because the water is always fresh i mean it doesn't necessarily make that much of a difference because 
within their habitat they are actually in the dry but i don't know if it would also create some crazy forces under the water um so that they might even not be able to swim inside of their habitat well actually there would be from the other side obviously but yeah um now one last addition we have to this area is another viewing platform on the other hand side and here is me using a little technique again that you guys have been pointing out quite often lately. This goes down to Mr. Haribo, but before me talking too much about this in here, I have prepared a little tutorial about this. If I make it, um, I will upload this today as well, so you will be able to um, catch this little tutorial uh, in order to understand how this technique actually works. It's rather short, rather simple, but you know, um, having the word simple, short uh, in, in one, video which is about pathing and planet zoo is something very crazy and almost worrying but trust me it's a good thing and it's a very good thing in this kind of sense um that you will be able to build these kind of narrow path now way more easy than you have ever been before and yeah that's kind of cool a little bit so for the bros uh you know beyond uh, within your group of people i don't know God, I have no more words. I don't even know what I'm talking. Um, they will have spotted how it works by now. But, you know, there will be a dedicated explanation in this tutorial video. So, I'm again, I've not planned when to release those videos. I'm, I'm working a little bit in uh, preparation at the moment. So, yeah, I don't know if that is the first one or if the tutorial might already be out. So, in, in case it's already out, I potentially will have put an info card in this video. Uh, just a little reminder, if you guys don't use these info cards, I always have info cards in my videos. So, you can just skip to the right right hand side there's this little um question mark bubble always popping out and if you click on that you will see all the videos linked in there and mostly I try to make them really related to the content you see rather than spamming some weird videos in so I'm always trying to to give them a meaning so in case I'm talking about let's say Oak Street City Zoo I would put in this and if I'm talking about this tutorial I'm going to put this tutorial and if I'm going to talk about the playlist I would put the playlist so in case you're always interested in seeing that content it is always to the right hand side and now before we move into the real time part again my little reminder for those of you who haven't been part of my live streaming crew yet make sure to jump in the description there is the link to my live stream which is on twitch yes i named it i mean come on we can just say it once um and at the moment i'm streaming mostly on tuesdays um i will try to keep that and maybe add a second day in a week if that's somehow possible but for now it is on tuesdays um, and you can catch also the live streams over there pretty simply by just following and then you get the notification whenever i'm alive or you just join my discord you will always be notified in there as well if i'm going live i would be really much loving it if I could greet more of you people in the live stream because lately it has been again really cool um, streaming for you guys it's a very cool interaction really lovely stuff I do like this direct kind of feedback you guys give me because it just offers so much more flexibility in reacting in real time to what I'm doing and also lately I've, I've gotten some comments about why so much I do is time-lapse that people would rather love to see uh, real-time videos, which is kind of surprising um, because I've seen many, many people commenting that, especially on the franchise mode, which seems to be very much welcome by you guys. You guys seem to love that, which I totally, totally understand. and I love it too, but it's very interesting to see because um, I'm still at this point that I think people like time lapses more but you know this is also why i add always the real time part because people seem to to like it more so for me it's way more you know relaxing to make real time stuff but um yeah it will always be a mix anyhow that is almost uh, the end of the time lapse now i really hope you guys enjoyed it and i will now uh, hand you over to my real time overview part camel so enjoy that one and see you there Hello everyone and welcome to the wonderful real time part here in the beaver habitat or the beaver creek I should call it. Um, actually, it's not even a creek, it's like a little river, I don't know. Um, there are some plans uh, about this river we are going to unveil at the end here. I don't even know if I have talked about this in the uh, voiceover part but yeah this is the way how you can approach that area here. So to the right hand side here this is where it goes into the African area. You can see it actually peeking through here in the bank. You can also see the ape house 
cows peeking through but on this left hand side there is the uh, beaver habitat and to get some cool views of that one there are actually two ways of doing so there's the first one is what we are just experiencing right now I'm just gonna go a little bit quicker over here we get this incredible uh, view inside of uh, the beavers uh, actual dam um, and you know uh, a little bit against the belief this is not the actual dam which is uh, holding the water um, it is actually the second part as uh, you've seen in the build and also um, heard me talking about in the uh, voiceover part so yeah basically what they do is they do swim from down here under this thing inside of this wonderful secured area I might even want to just kind of uh, finish that off in the back here I just keep it open at, for the moment but normally this is kind of uh, closed off as well so I might want to do this as, as well because uh, that's kind of a little bit unrealistic and yeah we have some education going on here at the, you know wh whenever there is like a final version of this um, and maybe we have the, the animal in game there will be a real education board but yeah so this is the basic idea about this side um, and now let's go to the other side because it's also pretty exciting to see um, I kind of completely changed uh, this a little bit because um, I wanted to have something else and you have to walk now this entire way and as of now there was nothing to for you to dif uh, discover so once you go to the left hand side you can see a little bit of uh, the gorillas obviously over here one is running there you know hello um, but there was nothing else here to discover but now we do have this uh, lovely little shelter thing um, and viewing spot over here so you give this little curly three meter wide path a little go and then uh, you just back up here <laughs> and then this is where you are at and now you have this uh, wonderful view inside of the beaver habitat and I think that looks really cool with the water tumbling down here in the back uh, being hold off I, I still need to do some water effects in here so to make that look a little bit better and then this is kind of uh, the actual dam holding the water up here in this level where they can actually have their housing then and yeah this tumbles down and I do still have some ideas uh, with this little water over here which I'm going to talk you through right now so let's jump out of Tejit Cam and I'm going to show you what is up with this habitat so this is how it looks from above now and I really think that this is the best way of fitting in that gap we still had over here and Holy cow, look at that guys, look at how much we filled in this area in season number three. This will also be actually the last episode of season number three. Um, I will do a tour, obviously, um, and I will do some minor tweaks maybe off screen, but this is it about season number three. I will talk about season number four quite soon, um, but yeah, for now this is it. And what we will do, just to inform you already, this little water element is going to continue on and it will continue through here. We will um, hide this in a little tunnel system, but it will then come out here again and then go back into the actual river, which is over here. So it's feeding the river, but I still do have an idea what to do with the water. So it's not like going to be very simply fed into the river, just like a little water feature. No, it will actually get a little special thing to it. Um, I do have my idea here. I'm not sure how it will work out and if it will work out, but I'm quite sure that it is definitely worth a little little go you will see that um hopefully then uh, very soon in in the next couple of weeks when the next update uh yeah of this project is going to happen but as of now this is it for uh, the little beaver habitat i think it's a fan favorite you guys have asked for it so often and yeah i really hope you like the uh, approach i had on it oh by the way maybe one thing i want to mention if i haven't done this in the time lapse this is obviously not yet a functioning habitat whatsoever i didn't even do the barriers yet because again um i i think it's as of now also there's no animal i could put in here so i just want to make it kind of believe as if there could be like the beavers living in here um, which would be rather cool uh, instead of just you know um, making a habitat out of this I could actually believe that this would be like a rather real one um, where the beavers are living and it's just kind of you know kind of seamlessly integrated into the zoo having some fences to prevent people from going there but actually let them them beavers just live here you know I think that could be actually believable but let me know in the comments down below what you think about this idea and if you have any kind of other idea how to realize that but and um but that should be it for now have a good good day everyone and i see you in the next one 
thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I really hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, I was really happy to have you here. In case you enjoyed it and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to consider subscribing. You can do it via this button here. And if you want to see more, uh, there are some cool other stuff linked here for you. This is suggested for you personally. That's pretty cool. And in case you want to support the channel a tiny bit more, you can do it via this wonderful Hype Camel link over here. I really would appreciate it. And also, big thank you already to all the people who do already support the channel. Really do appreciate that. But now, have a wonderful time, guys. And I catch you in the next one.